After Air Force won last week, the ACU football team bears down for its home opener tonight. I'm Hannah Nall. And I'm Grant Boone. We'll look back at that fight with the Falcons and preview tonight's game against Northern Colorado on the Ken Collum Show right now. Welcome to week two of the Ken Collum Show from the JMC Network Studios on the campus of Abilene Christian University. I'm Grant Boone, joined by ACU junior journalism major Hannah Null and the head coach of the ACU football Wildcats, Ken Collins. Last week in Colorado Springs, Colorado, ACU opened the 2016 season with a spirited battle against the Air Force Academy. The Falcons came out on top 37-21. Coach, I call it spirited how would you describe everything that happened last saturday pre-game middle of the game post-game i would use the word spirited uh, mainly to describe the festivities before the game uh, because it, that that environment was unlike anything that i'd ever experienced before it's hard to describe because there's so much pride in what those people do and who they are Thousands of cadets line up, and they're, they're so fired up. They're, they're sitting right behind us, <laughs> harassing us oh, and all yeah. that. But every, every bit of it was clean, and it was, it was the quintessential environment for competition, mm. and we really enjoyed it. Uh, it is unlike, and it's just unlike any other place in the world, really, the Air Force Academy. Coach, you've got Northern Colorado at home tonight. How nice is it to be back at Stockwell Stadium? It's great because last time we played Northern Colorado, we went to Greeley, and that's a long trip. <laughs> so, and, and, and it didn't work out for us so well. But, uh, man, I love playing at home. Uh, Shotwell is home for us for five more games. And, <laughs> and so uh, we're fired up about bringing anybody in. Uh, I think it'll be a really good matchup. Well, we will preview that game against Northern Colorado a little bit later on. But when we come back, highlights from ACU and Air Force. Stay with us here on the Ken Collum Show. As ACU plays its 58th and final season at Shotwell Stadium, we'll look back each week on the Ken Collum Show at some of our favorite memories. Today's final shot takes us back to the 2009 season opener when the Wildcats hosted Northwest Missouri State in ACU's first ever nationally televised home game. Broadcast on CBS Sports Network was delayed by a squall that blew through just before kickoff. ACU weathered the elements and the Bearcats that night, winning 19 to 14. Well, last Saturday in Colorado Springs, Colorado, ACU fell to the Air Force Academy by a final score of 37 to 21. With a look at the highlights, here is Jonathan Rates. ACU started its 95th football season in Colorado Springs last Saturday against the United States Air Force Academy. The Wildcats entered the game as heavy underdogs against the Falcons, who have never lost against an FCS opponent, but showed no signs of nerves early on. On Air Force's first possession of the game, senior safety DJ Arnold forced a fumble that was recovered by junior defensive end Dylan Douglas. After the Wildcats were forced to punt, the defense was again up to the challenge as junior Bryson Gates sacked quarterback Nate Romine to force a three and out. Nate Romine the ball carrier. Then, on the Falcons' next possession, a mishandled snap between Romine and fullback Shane Dabin was recovered by freshman Temason Kuyasemi. Despite the fast start by the Wildcat defense, it was Air Force who found the end zone first on a 62-yard pass from Romine to tight end Ryan Reffick, giving the Falcons a 7-0 lead at the end of the first quarter. But just a few minutes into the second quarter, it was redshirt sophomore Dallas Seeley finding freshman Josh Fink from 8 yards out to cap a 10-play, 85-yard drive with a touchdown and tie the game at 7. After responding with two quick touchdowns to push the lead to 21-7, it was the Falcons striking again with just a minute left in the first half, as Roman connected with Ronald Cleveland for 62 yards and a touchdown to make it 28-7 heading into the half. Despite allowing 21 points in the second quarter, the Wildcat defense held tough, holding Air Force scoreless in the third quarter, as it was Seeley finding Juco transfer DJ Fuller for the first points in the second half 
and cutting the Falcon lead to 28 to 14. Sealy's pass complete to DJ Fuller. However, the Falcons would capitalize on the Wildcats' missed field goal late in the third and score 10 unanswered points to put the game out of reach at 37 to 14. Seeley would find redshirt freshman Tracy James for a 76-yard touchdown with just over four minutes left in the game, but Air Force converted one final first down to preserve the win at 37 to 21. Seeley's pass is complete to Tracy James for the Wildcats touchdown. Okay, Jonathan, thank you. Final score, 37-21 in favor of Air Force. Coach, you told me on the, the pregame radio show that you weren't sure how your team would play, but you were excited to see them compete. Very first offensive possession for Air Force, D.J. Arnold lays the lumber, forces a fumble. What did that one moment, first of all, it was a pretty cool hit, <laughs> it was. watching the ball fly up. It was. What did that one moment do for your sideline to get you into that game? Well, we had talked about needing to create some turnovers and, and – you know, we're several minutes into the game, and there's one thing to get a turnover, but to get it, it's how we got it. Yeah. That, that, was, that was the magnitude of that. I mean, the ball shot up 12, 15 feet in the air. And nice then, catch by and, Dylan and Douglas, Dylan too, Douglas too, almost it? had to fair catch it. <laughs> but it was it was a violent hit, very clean hit. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that, that creates nothing but momentum for your sideline. You know, you, in the first three possessions for Air Force, you force two fumbles. You get another one. And... and Temesan Kuyatsemi comes up with a fumble recovery. They get you on their fourth offensive possession with a long ball. Was that a case of, of kind of classic Air Force drawing you in with a run and then hitting you over the top? Oh, yeah, that's, that's what they do. You're, when you're doing a great job defending a certain segment of their offense, they've always got the next thing. And, and uh, you know, the play action pass is that's that's how they score points. They they're gonna they're gonna make a whole lot of yards. They're gonna move the move the chains on the ground and they'll score some points on the ground. But that's where they're gonna get their biggest plays is, is through play action pass. You come back and you get a touchdown toss from Dallas Seeley to freshman Josh Fink from Coppell. A beautiful pump fake by Dallas and he hits Josh in the back of the end zone. They respond, Air Force with three straight touchdown drives or three touchdown drives in the final few minutes of the second quarter. Overall, going into halftime, down 28-7, how did you feel about where the game was? Well, I, well, I, was, I was disappointed that we gave up the 20 The last one. Yeah, yeah, because it was, you know, it was a deal where I called timeout right before a third down in order for them to, you know, hey, punt it to us, and, and then we've got a chance to move down and be the last one to score. We get a pass interference penalty which keeps their drive alive and then the very next play they score again so things did, things kind of blew up on my decision making and that you never know how that's going to work out because I mean our guys Jabari Butler's a, an aggressive corner and, and against a big receiver and, and you've Good got to see. push and shove a little bit and we got we got uh, tagged on that but overall what I thought you know our guys weren't very fired up at halftime they just given up given up a couple touchdowns they're late and, and the offense did not score uh, at the end of the first half but but what I was very proud of is they took a deep breath, mm -hmm. took a step back, and I told them, I said, we're going to give you some, we're going to give you some things that are going to help. We can tweak some things, and these are going to go, these are going to work. Now, Air Force is going to come counter what we're about to do, uh, so just expect that. And so we go out and, and uh, you know, in the third quarter, and we we do a dandy job in the third quarter. Now you, we we outplay them. You shut them out, and then you get a 43-yard touchdown toss from Sealy to D.J. Fuller, a transfer from a junior college in Southern California. He goes for 109 yards and a touchdown. That was a pretty play. And Dallas had had a couple of chances for the long ball in the first half and overthrown receivers. He put that one on the money, didn't That's he? That's exactly right. In the first half, their guys made plays. When there was a competitive play down the field, mm. their guys made them. Uh, Dallas did not give our guys a chance to, to make those certain plays, or we would – Drop the ball. We had one. We had one situation where we had a drop that would that was going to be a chunk play, possibly a touchdown. So, uh, but our guys, our guys answered, and that's what you want to see as a head coach. You're a, against a good team. Things aren't going to go well no, all that's the right. time. And and our guys were able to get get themselves back together and go out and look like a legitimate football team. Well, coach, you take it down to the fourth quarter. At one point, you had the ball first and goal at the eight, down 28-14. They get you 37-21.
Uh, but but big picture takeaway was your team stood in toe to toe with a team that's expected to contend for the Mountain West Conference title. That had to leave you encouraged. Didn't sure, it? yeah. And most people when they go into Falcon Stadium, they don't win. They just, no matter they, who you are. That's exactly right. So we we they're they're in the third quarter. The stadium was silent. It was and in because, a good way for you. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> right. And as a, as the visiting team, that's exactly what you want. We just you know they they made more plays than us and and. Uh, you know, you tip your hat to them, that's a good football team, and they're going to win a lot of games this year. Well, now ACU tries to even its record tonight with the game against Northern Colorado at Shotwell Stadium. We'll preview that game in just a moment, but as we go to break, take a look at last week's scores from around the Southland Conference. Stay with us on the Ken Collins Show. We're back with more of the Ken Collins Show. While ACU football has its first home game of the season, the other sports around ACU hit the road. Here's Max Preston with a look at more ACU sports. Thanks, Hannah. The soccer team had another busy weekend during which it picked up its first win of the season, beating Prairie View A&M 5-0 on Friday. The team went on to lose 3-1 against Texas Tech in Lubbock Sunday. Senior Natalie Throneberry scored goals in the, two goals in the win against Prairie View, while Dylan Owens, Chelsea Reedy, and Allie Gurner got their first goals of the season. Junior Leslie Snyder tallied the single goal in the loss against Tech. The women will face SMU on Sunday. The volleyball team earned its first win of the season against UT Arlington at home with a 3-2 set score. The teams went back and forth in the last match on Tuesday night, finishing in an ACU victory of 18-16. Sophomore Kendall Bossy had 51 assists, while freshman Amanda Chapa had a team high of 23 digs. The team lost three matches over the weekend in the Omaha Classic in Nebraska, with an overall record of 1-7. The women will face Oral Roberts University Saturday in Lubbock. New Cross Country head coach Lance Bingham heads into his first year with the Wildcats with a meet in Lubbock at Texas Tech. In the last five seasons, Bingham led Liberty to a combined 14 conference titles. Expected senior standout Michaela and Alexandria Hackett look to lead the women's team, while seniors Ster Sterling Paul and Reed Rivers headline the men's team. Well, that wraps up this week's sportscast. For JMC Network Sports, I'm Max Preston. Thanks, Max. Some of the least recognized players in football are those who play special teams, punts, kickoffs, field goals. But this week, ACU's punter, Austin Kilcullen, was recognized by the Southland Conference as a special teams player of the week. He's coming off an impressive game against Air Force, punted for an average of 46 yards, but football isn't his only passion. In preparation for the home opener, Austin shared a little more about what it means to be a special teams player and how he balances his love for punting with pictures. Austin, most people know the quarterback and the running back, but not everyone knows special teams players. So what does the term special teams player really mean? And what does, it, what does the role all entail? Yeah, so we are the ones that come in either on fourth down or just after scoring. But um, for me specifically, I will go in on fourth downs and just try and get some field position for the defense on punts and just try and pin them as deep as possible. You had a great game against Air Force, obviously. I mean, you got recognized from the Southland Conference for Special Teams Player of the Week, and you were nationally recognized. So what does that honor mean to you? It means a lot because um, I was a walk-on here. So um, just in my last year to kind of see how far I've come and really have seen it through the entire process and just have seen it from like my locker number being like 135 to like actually like starting to traveling to this year getting recognized, it means a lot. Okay, so switching gears a little bit, football and photography, two totally different things. Mm -hmm. So how did you come to find both of them? Um, it's it's funny because I've been doing each about the same same length of time. I started taking pictures summer before my junior year of high school and um, just like worked some jobs and made enough money to buy myself a camera and just kind of started messing around with it and it's gone from there. And football, I actually um, didn't play but two years of high school ball. Got cut from my high school soccer team my freshman year during tryouts and was like, well, you know, I don't really know what sport I'm going to play now and um, went out and played two years of high school ball junior senior year and ended up here so it's funny the guys that are coming in as freshmen have uh, probably played more football than I have at this point. For me taking pictures is kind of a way to document what's around me. You know it's nice to see it every day but being able to look back in like five years and kind of seeing where I was at during that phase of my life and just being able to look back like to high school and see how far I've grown as a photographer but also to see where I was as a like a high school student and as a person just and see that kind of change over time and now with doing a lot of client work it's nice too because it feels like 
you're not just buying from brands, you actually have something to kind of bring to the table and you can collaborate with people and it's really cool. What are your expectations for this week's game? I mean, like I said, you had a really good game at Air Force. So what are you expecting from yourself, the team, just kind of all in general against Northern Colorado? Well, um, when you play a game like I played last week, it's the hardest thing is just to try and carry that momentum through the week and not let that go to your head and just continue to play well, um, not, not just on Saturdays, but Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays in practice. And um, this week, Northern Colorado has a really good punt returner, so we're working up some different things, doing some uh, some rollout punts and whatnot, just to try and game plan against that. But um, I expect us to do really well. It was nice to go out and see the team do well at, against Air Force and play them early and know that we, we, we have what it takes to go and be competitive throughout the rest of the year. Thank you so much, Austin. Good luck tonight. When we return, we'll see what Coach Columns has planned to send the Bears back into hibernation. Stay with us right here on the Ken Columns Show. As we welcome you back to the Ken Columns Show, take a look at today's schedule around the Southland Conference. It includes Lamar's showdown with number 15 Houston. The Cougars last week knocked off the Oklahoma Sooners. Should be a good one. Well, we turn our attention now to tonight's game at Shotwell Stadium, ACU hosting Northern Colorado. Coach, last year this team got you up in Greeley, Colorado. 40-36 to 36 was the final score. They have a terrific running back in Trey Reich. He got you pretty good last year, your defense, and they've got an experienced quarterback in Jacob Nip. When you look at your defense going up against their offense, what do you, you think is the most important thing? Well, it's always to stop the run. You've got, and if you can't stop, you've got to compress because he's fast. I mean, he he is a hundred meter champion in, in in the state of Colorado. I mean, the guy when he gets out, he's he's gone. Uh, the the key is don't give him clean looks inside. Make him bounce. Make him run parallel. And, uh, and then your safeties and corners can come can kind of come help. But uh, we match up very well with those guys uh, because what they do offensively is very similar to what we do. So we're gonna have we're gonna have plenty plenty of looks already without even practicing against Northern Colorado because they're, they're, they're similar to us. Coach, 36 points last year, and that was with Parker McKenzie starting. So what do you expect the offense to do against their defense this year with Dallas Seeley and a bunch of new guys out on the offense? Well, we've got we've to make consistent plays, which we didn't against Air Force. Uh, and, and then we've, we've, we didn't play bad against them. We just didn't make enough plays to win the game in the, in the end. Uh, so I, think, I feel like if we go out and play clean, uh, not have third down breakdowns like we had last week, uh, we'll give ourselves a chance to win. Coach, this is a little bit of a, a quirk in the schedule. You don't often see a non-conference opponent for a second time in your last three games. You right. ended last year, and now it's game two this year. Every team, no matter how many guys you bring back, every team's a little different, isn't it? No matter sure. how many guys you bring in new. Is it a little bit of an advantage to, to have seen them at the end of last year? Sure, it is, because we know, we'll know their personnel a little bit better, and of course they'll know us, but we've got new, more new guys than, than they do. It's basically their same team coming back down here, which, which, which finished the season as a good football team. So uh, we're a little bit different, they're not, and uh, so we'll see how it shakes out. Last week we got to see Tracy, Jan Tracy James going a little bit for DeAndre Brown, and you've mentioned a couple times that depth is the key to the success this year. So how was it to see that Tracy James, on a normal starter, came out and, and did pretty well. Well, it, first of all, it bothered me that DeAndre goes out in our second series. You know, <laughs> that kind of is pretty aggravating when you're looking forward to him, you know, hopefully being healthy all year. But that's yeah, just a tweaked ankle, and he'll be fine uh, ultimately. But when you have young guys step up and make you proud as a coach, uh, you know, that's a, that's a good feeling. With, and with Adrian Duncan, those two guys, those two guys did a did a pretty good job last week. The catch and run from Tracy James was nominated for a national award for play of the week. That was that was a legit stiff arm at about yes, the 10, wasn't it? Yes, good job by Dallas to uh, evade yeah, the we, rush oh, a little bit. Goodness. He knew where his guy was. He whipped it I out there. I thought he was down. I know, and Tracy hit the gas and with a little stiff arm at the end. Uh, it was a good play. You mentioned DeAndre. You don't think the ankle is serious. How overall did you come out injury-wise from the Air Force? We came out really good. Uh, we had a, had a guy with a shoulder, uh, Devonrick Meadows. Uh, his shoulder came out a little bit. But overall, we're not limping around this week, which a lot of people are after they play the Great. Air Force Academy because those guys do such a good job of blocking 
below the waist and it's totally legal what they do but a lot of times it just it, it, nobody else does it as well as them and it gives us a chance to give some props to your strength and conditioning coach because a, a team that's less conditioned maybe comes out with a few more injuries that's exactly right Jeff Burke has done a great job he and his staff over there in the weight room and our guys are in the best shape of their lives at this time mm. in a season and they feel good so even though we didn't win the game last week there was a there was enough positives to come out to, to go you know what mm. let's get this thing streamlined a little bit more let's see, let these new guys get a little more reps a few more reps and then and then our our level of improvement may go out the roof one more season at shotwell stadium begins tonight the home opener against the university of northern colorado should be a big night we'll have the kickoff at six o'clock and the pregame show for you on 98.1 FM, The Ticket, and online at 98theticket.com, beginning at 5.30. For Hannah and for Coach, I'm Grant Boone. Enjoy the game, and we'll see you next week on The Ken College.